Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, CUBE conversation here in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier, a co-host of theCUBE. I'm here with Aaron Kalb, who's the co-founder and VP of design at Alation. Uh, great to see them on, on some fresh funding news. Aaron, thanks for coming in and spending the time. Good to see you again. Great to see you, John. Thanks for having me. So, big news. Uh, well, you guys got a very big round of financing. Um, you guys are going to the next level as a, as a startup, certainly coming out of that startup phase and the growth phase. Uh, super exciting news. You guys are doing some very innovative things around data, around uh, community, around people, and really kind of cracking the code on this humanization, democratization of data, but actually helping businesses. So I want to talk about that with you. First, give us the update on the financing, the amount, what it means to the company. It's a lot of cash. Yeah, so we're very excited to have raised a, a $50 million round. Uh, Sapphire led the round, and, and we also had you know, re-ups from all of our existing investors. And you know, as a, as a co-founder, you always have big dreams for growth, and it's just validating to have uh, a community of investors who kind of see that future too, as well as our great community of over 100 customers now who want to kind of build this data democratized future with us, so. We've been following you guys since the founding, obviously um, watching you guys. Great use of capital. 50 million is a lot of capital, so obviously validation, check, mm -hmm. good, good job. But now you go to a whole other level, growth. Mm -hmm. What's the capital going to be deployed for? What's going on with the company? Where are you guys eyeing in terms of the innovation? What's the key focus? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so, you know, obviously we have revenue from our customers, but getting this extra infusion from VC lets us just supercharge our development. Uh, it's growth, it's going to more customers, both domestically and abroad, going to a broader user base and more enterprise-wide adoption within those customers, as well as innovation in the core product, new technology, uh, great design, and features that are really going to change their organization's access and use data to make better decisions. What was the key learnings as you guys went into this round of funding, obviously the validation to go through due diligence, all that good stuff, but you guys have made some successful milestones. What was the key notable accomplishments that Alation hit? to kind of hit this trigger point here for the 50 million. Yeah, I'm glad you asked about that. I think that the key thing that's changed, that's enabled this, this next phase, is that the uh, data catalog market has really come into its own, right? In the beginning, in the early days, we were knocking on doors, trying to say, you know, we didn't even know it was going to be called data catalog in our first few months, you know, even though we had the technology. We said, hey, we got this thing, and we know it's useful. Please buy it, please want it. And the question was, you know, what's a data catalog? Why would I ever even look at that? And it's just turned a corner. Now, you know, thanks in part to uh, things like Gartner telling companies, if, you know, in the next year, by 2020, if you have a data catalog, you're going to see twice the ROI from your existing data investments than if you don't. You know, um, stories like that are making companies say, of course you want a data catalog. It just yeah. turned on a dime. Now they're asking, which data catalog should we get? Why is yours the best? And this change of the market maturing, I think is the biggest uh, change we've seen. Yeah, one thing that we've observed, and I want to get your reaction to this, is that I'll say with cloud computing, um, the economics are phenomenal. You see scale, obviously data, data science work in the cloud. Mm -hmm. We see great success there. Now there's multiple clouds, multi-cloud's a big trend, but also the validation that it's not just all cloud anymore. The on-premises activity still is relevant, although it might have a cloud operations, really kind of changes the role of data. You mentioned the data catalogs kind of being kind of having a, a common mainstream visibility from the analysts like Gartner and others uh, and Wikibon as well. It makes data the center of the innovation, and now you have data challenges around, okay, where's the data deployed? Where am I using the data? Because data scientists want ease of data. They want quality data. They yep. want to make sure their, their algorithm, whether it's a machine learning um, uh, component or, or software, actually is running on good data. So data effectiveness is now part of the operations of most businesses. What's your reaction to that? What's your thoughts? Is that how you see it? Is there something different there? What's going on with the whole data at the center. Absolutely, you hit on, on two key themes for us. One is this, that, that idea of the center, and the other is your point about data quality and data trust. So, so centrality we think is really essential. You know, we're seeing cataloging technology crop up more and more. A lot of people are coming out with catalogs or catalog kind of add-ons to their products. But what our customers really tell us is they want the data catalog to be the hub, the one-stop shop where they go to to access any data wherever it lives, whether it's in the cloud or on-prem whether it's in a relational database or a file system. So it's one of Alation's key differentiators early on was being that central uh, um, uh, index, much like Google is sort of the front page to the internet, even though it's linking to web pages all over the place. And the other thing in terms of that data quality and data trustworthiness has been a differentiator, and this was something that was part of our technology when we launched, that we didn't put the label on it till later, is this idea of behavior IO. That's kind of looking at previous human behavior to influence 
um, future human behavior to be better. And this is another place where we really uh, took some inspiration from Google and, and Terry Winograd at, at Stanford before that. You know, he observed, you know, if you remember back before Google, search sucked, frankly, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, the results on top were not the most relevant, were not the most yeah. trustworthy. And the reason was those algorithms were based on saying, how often does your keyword appear in that website relative to other words? And so you'd get results on top that might just not be very good or even that were created by spammers who put in a lot of words to get SEO and, and you know, that isn't uh, the best result for you. And what Google did was turn that around with PageRank and say let's use the signals that other people are leaving behind about the pages they find valuable to get the best result on top. And Alation does the exact same thing. Our, our patented proprietary behavior technology lets us say who's using this data, how are they using it, uh, is it reputable, and that enables us to get the right data and the trustworthy data in front of decision makers. And you call that behavioral I.O.? Behavior I.O., that's yeah, right. I mean, certainly I remember Google algorithmic search was poo-pooed at first, you had to be a portal. Everyone kind of, my age, you kind of remember those, those days. And the results were keyword stuff by mm -hmm. spammers. But algorithmic search accelerated the quality. So I got to ask you the behavioral I.O. to kind of unpack that a little bit, go a little deeper. What does that mean for customers? Because now, I'll see, as people start thinking, okay, I need to catalog my data because now I need to have replication, all kinds of all these technical things that are going on around integrity of the data. But why behavioral I.O.? What's the angle on that? What's the impact of the customer? Why is this important? Uh, absolutely, so um, I might have to work through an example. Uh, you know, we joke about you might be looking around in your SharePoint drive and you find an Excel file called Q3 numbers final, uh, you know, underscore final. And you're like, okay, that seems, that seems like the final numbers. And then you see next to it when it says underscore final, underscore final, underscore final. It's like, okay, well, is that one final? And it turns out what data says about itself is less reliable than what other people say about the data. Same thing with Google, right? If everyone's linking to the Wikipedia page, that's a more reliable page than one that just has you know, paid for a higher placement, right? So um, what it means in an organization is with Alation, we'll tell you, you know, this is the data table that was refreshed yesterday and that the CFO and everybody in this department is using every day. That's a really strong signal that's trustworthy data as opposed to something that was only used once a year ago. So relevance is key there. Absolutely, it's relevance and trustworthiness we find both are um, indicated more strongly by who's using it and how than by the data itself. Are you seeing adoption with data scientists and people who are wrangling data or data analysts that if the data is not high quality, they abandon the usage? Is there any kind of stats around that? Or, because that we're hearing a lot of people saying, hey, you know, I'm not going to really work on the data if, it's, if, I, if I'm not going to do all this heavy lifting on the front end if the data quality is not there. Absolutely, we see a really cool upward spiral. So in Alation, we have a mix of manual human curated metadata, you know, data stewards and data curators saying, this is endorsed data, this is certified data, this is applicable for this context. But we also do this automatic behavior IO where we parse the query logs. These logs were yeah. you know, put there for audit and debugging purposes, but we've, we're mining that for yeah. behavioral insight. Um, and we'll show them side by side. And what we see is over time, on day one, there's no manual curation. But as that curation gets added in, we see a strong correlation between the best, highest quality data and the most used data. And we also see an upward spiral where if on day one, people are using data that isn't trustworthy, that's stale yeah. or miscalculated, yeah. as soon as a, 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 an Alation steward slaps a deprecation or a warning on the data yeah. asset, because of technology like trust check we talked about <laughs> yeah. last time I was here, yeah. that, te that technology, that's the kind of the O part of behavior IO. We then stop the future behavior from being uh, on bad data, and we see an upward spiral where suddenly the, the, the bad yeah. data is no longer being used and everyone's guided toward the right path. One of the things I'm really impressed with you guys on is you have a great management team and, and um, an overall team with mixed disciplines. Okay, I think last time we talked about your role at Stanford and the human side of the, of the world, but you bring up the search analogy, which is interesting because you have search folks, you got hardcore data, data geeks all working together, and if you think about discovery, and navigation, which is the Google paradigm. I need to find a web page and go, go go to it. You guys are in that same business of helping people discover data and act on it, or take action. Same kind of paradigm. So explain some customer impact um, anecdotes. Um, people who bought Alation, bought your service and offering, and what happened after, and what was it like before? So talk about some of that anecdote, because I think you're onto something pretty big here with this discovery, actionable data uh, perspective. Yeah, well, 
one of our values at Elation is that we measure our success through customer impact, you know, not through financing or other, other milestones that we are excited about them. So I, I would love to talk about our customers. Um, one example in terms of a business impact is an example um, that uh, our champion at Safeway Albertsons describes where um, after Safeway was acquired by Albertsons, they'd been uh, sort of pioneers of sort of digital um, uh, 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 loyalty and engagement, and there was a move to kind of uh, stop that in its tracks and switch to just mailing people big books of coupons instead of customizing you know, deals for you based on your buying behavior. And they talk about getting a 30x ROI on the dollars they spent on Elation by basically proving the value of their program and kind of maximizing their relationship with their customers. But the stories that are even more exciting to me than just business impacts and dollars and cents, when we can leave a positive impact on people's lives with data. Just a few examples of that. Munich Reinsurance, the biggest uh, reinsurer and also a primary insurer in, in Europe, um, had some coverage in Forbes about the way that they use Elation and other data tools to be able to help people get back on their feet more quickly after a, 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 you know, earthquakes and, and other n natural disasters. And similarly, there was a piece in the Wall Street Journal about how Pfizer is able to create diagnostics and treatments for rare diseases where they, it wouldn't have been a good ROI to even invest in those if they didn't get that increased efficiency in their analytics from Elation yeah. and their other data tools. So it's not just one little vertical, it's kind of, I mean, data is, horizontally scalable. It's not like one industry is going to leverage elation. Absolutely. So, you know, I mentioned just now insurance and healthcare and retail. We're also in tech. We're in basically every vertical you can imagine. And even multiple sectors. You know, I've been focusing on industry, but there's another case study you can read about at the city of San Diego yeah. where they're, they're doing an open data initiative enabling people to figure out everything from where parking is easiest <laughs> to, or, or hardest yeah. to anything else. So behavioral IO and it's all about context and behavior, role of data and all this is kind of fundamental to businesses. That's right, it's all about taking everything about how people are using data today and driving people to be even more data driven, more accurate, better able to satisfy their curiosity and be more rational in the future. So if I'm a, if I'm a potential customer and I, I've heard of Elation, got the buzz out there, why would I need you? What are some signals that would indicate that I should call Elation? What's some of that core value? What's the pitch? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. You know, I sometimes joke with uh, the team that you know every five minutes another enterprise reaches that point where they can't do it the old way anymore and they need Elation. And the reason for that is that data is growing exponentially and people can only grow at most you know, l l linearly. So I compare it a bit again to the days of, of Yahoo when the internet was small, you can make a table of contents for it, but as there came to be trillions of web pages, you needed that automatic index with yeah. PageRank to make sense of it. So I would say once you find that your analytics team is spread out and they're spending 80% you know, of their time calling up other people to find where the relevant data is or ask to your point, yeah. is this data high quality? Should I even spend my yeah. time on it? You know, that's probably not money as well spent with these highly paid people spending all their time scrounging. Yeah. If you want them to sw switch from scrounging to finding, understanding, and trusting their data yeah. for quick and accurate analysis, give us a call. So basically the pitch is, if you want to be like Yahoo, <laughs> do it the old way. We know what happened to Yahoo. If you want to be like Google, do algorithmic and have data, go, <laughs> go elation and you'll be around for a while. Very well said. <laughs> we, we do think that they, Maybe you don't want to say that, but that's my and, words. And, and that's part of turning that corner. Yeah. I think in the beginning, we were trying to tell people this could be a nice to have, and now customers are coming to us realizing it's a must have to stay relevant. You know, and if you've made all these investments in data infrastructure and data people, but you can't connect the dots, as you said, between the human side and the tech side, that money's all wasted and you're going to not be able to compete against your, your competitors and, and, and impact your customers the way you want. Well, Aaron, congratulations. Certainly as the co-founder, it's great success. I know how hard it is to do startups. You guys have worked hard. And again, while following you guys, it's been interesting to, to see that growth. Um, and there's innovation involved, you know, creative, a lot of energy, you guys do a good job. So final question, talk about the secret sauce of Elation. What's the key innovation formula? And now that you got the funding, where are you going to double down on? Where's the innovation going to come next? So the innovation formula, and where is the innovation in the future? Absolutely, innovation has been critical for us to get here and our customers didn't just buy the, the exciting features with Behaviorio and Trust Check that we had, but also are buying into the idea that we're going to continue to be the leaders and to innovate. Um, and, and we're going to do that. So I think the secret sauce, which we've had in the past, and we're going to continue to innovate in this vein, is to be really conscious of what are computers great at, and what are humans uniquely good at, and what do humans like doing, 
and trying to have the human and computers work together to really help the human achieve their goals, right? So back to the Google example, you know, there's a bunch of systems for collaboratively ranking things, but it takes work to you know, write a review on, on Yelp or Amazon. Google had the insight that we could leverage what people are already doing and make value out of that, and we're going to continue to do that. The other kind of innovation you'll see is bringing Alation to a wider and wider audience uh, with less and less technical skill needed. Yeah. So I came from Siri at Apple, and the idea is you don't have to learn a programming language to query a database, you can just speak in English. That yeah. helps you ask, answer questions like, what's the weather today? Imagine taking that yeah. same kind of experience of seamless integration yeah. to the more important questions enterprises are asking. We'll have to tap your expertise because we want to have an app called the Cube Siri, which is, hey Cube, what's the innovation in Silicon Valley? And have it just spit out a video. Only kidding. Um, <laughs> Final question, just to double down on that piece, because I think the human interaction is a big part of what you're saying. I've always loved that about what your vision is. But this points to a major problem you're seeing, whether it's you know, media, the news cycle these days, people are challenging, the efficacy of finding the research, and the, 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 there's re real deep research on the media side we're seeing, scale on data. Scale is a huge challenge. You mentioned the growth of data. Computers can scale things, but the knowledge and the curation kind of dynamic of packaging it, finding it, acting on it, is kind of where you guys are hitting. Talk about that dynamic, am I getting that right? And, and is, that, is that important? Because you know, certainly scale is, is table stakes these days. That is super insightful, John, because I think human cognition and human thought, excuse me, is the bottleneck for being data driven, right? We have, on the internet, trillions of web pages, you know, more than the Library of Alexandria a hundred times over. And we have in databases yeah. millions of columns and trillions of rows. But for that to actually impact the business and impact the world in a positive way, it's got to go through a person who can understand it. And so in the same way that Google became the mechanism by which the internet becomes accessible, we think that elation for organizations is becoming the way that data can become actionable. Yeah. And the other thing I would say is you know, in this age of alternative facts and mistrust of data, you know, we've sort of realizing that just having more information out there doesn't actually make people wiser and better able to reason. It can actually be a lot of noise that muddies the signal and confuses people. So we think elation by also using human computer interaction to help separate the signal from the noise and the quality yeah. from the garbage can help stop the garbage in, garbage out and make people more rational and more curious and have more trust in what they're hearing and understanding. And building that page rank kind of metaphor is interesting because the human gestures, whether it's work or engaging on the data, is a signal too, not just algorithmic metadata extraction. Absolutely, anything you do with data in any tool, even outside of Alation, Alation will capture that and use it to guide future behavior for you and your peers to be better and smarter. $50 million, where's this all going to lead to? When's the next innovation? What do you guys see the future for Alation? Well, you know, I, I uh, was just thinking before the show, I used to be at Apple, kind of in the golden age when Apple was really innovative, and there was the joke where they'd release something new and say, Redmond, start your photocopier. So <laughs> in this interview, I'm going to be a little close to the chest about the specifics of what we're releasing, yeah. but I will tell you, we have a roadmap we're really excited about to go to a broader and broader audience to impact our customers more fully. Well, you feel free to say one more thing. And then one more thing. The, the secret to the future is. <laughs> yeah. Aaron, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Congratulations on the funding. You guys got a very innovative formula. Uh, good luck, and we'll be following you guys. Thanks for coming on this CUBE conversation. Yeah, thanks appreciate so much. It. Aaron Cal, co founder and VP of design at Alation. Interesting formula, great successful formula, great innovation at Alation. Check them out. I'm John Furrier here in Palo Alto for CUBE Conversation. Thanks for watching. <laughs>